Good morning. I'm not a life coach and I'm not a therapist. My name is Ina Irby. And, and sometimes I uh, find that I don't share every day because one, it's, we're busy and we're a family and the family, my family is healing. And so, you know, they're, they're priority. My, my family is my priority. I do this because I know there's other people out there that are hurting. And my purpose actually was very selfish when I wanted to do this. I wanted to heal faster. And I'm recognizing that it, it is a process. I'm not gonna do it in three months. It's just not gonna happen that way. I spent 49 years in this crazy, in this crazy mindset that the end was coming and all these different prophecies and thoughts that, that are put in books and we read them and we're scared. Ugh. And that is just something that you have to, just as this says, this is this courage to change. It says that each, that it's layered, right? We're layered. As Jehovah's Witnesses, we have a lot of layers. And we, I have to say, I was very lazy. It was hard for me to understand things because one, I was lazy. I found it very easy. It, the, the, our doctrine is you don't look outside of the bond volumes or uh, jw.org. You just don't. And so what you're given is what, what you take. You, you take what you're given. And that's the, that is the way we live as Jehovah's Witnesses. So we never ever do any research. Uh, it's very rare we go to school. It's very rare. And so, yeah. It says, I believe that my life is built on layers of little everyday accomplishments. And when I think this way, Setting goals and taking small risks becomes nothing more than a daily striving to make my life better. And it's true, it's the small things that help us. Because even the small things are an, are an accomplishment. I am proud of you, you are here. You are a survivor and that is hard. What we have gone through is difficult. Not many humans have this, the, these problems. Now we can think of it in two different ways. Oh my gosh, how could this happen to me? Or, wow, this happened to me and look at where I am. Look at how far I've come and how far we can go if we help each other get there. So to, I look back and I do have a lot of a strange remembrance. Now I think about all the abuses that I saw and I will share those with you but I want to think of the positive in how we can get through it together. That makes a difference. How we see things, our perspective. As a family, we are healing as a family and my children have to be a part of that. And I'm trying to integrate that. Um, reading with them is very important. Uh, we read anyway as part of our homeschool environment. Um, and we don't just, I don't read cotton candy books. I read some heavy stuff with them. We've read Huckleberry Finn. We've read Tom Sawyer. We've read Home War Horse. We've read deep books. And um, I, I feel the same way with my children now. Um, we have to do this together. We cannot do this. And I cannot separate them from this type of my growth. They have to come with me. And I've, I have indoctrinated a very young girl. She's 12. She's almost 13. She'll be 13 February. Wait, January 17th. <laughs> one, one, January 15th. This is what's difficult because we do not celebrate birthdays. So even all my children's um, birthdays, I get all mixed up. January 15th. So, uh, yeah, it's coming up. She'll be 13 years old. We are reading together Crisis of Conscience as a family, and I will continue to pursue it. It is, we have just read the foreword, right? I didn't, I, I have read the foreword, and it is, wow, mind-blowing. 
you as a recovering Jehovah's Witness. I um, encourage you to invest in this book. This is, this is a book you will probably have to hide if you are, <laughs> if you are amongst the witnesses and you have family members. But it, the foreword is just beautiful. And it will help you to distinguish. It, it's a Stephen Arterburn in his book. It says, Toxic Faith. That a harmful faith will have these 10 characteristics. And of course, this is out. You know, Lloyd has explained it. Um, Cliff has explained it. Lady C and JT have explained it. And, um, but for people who are newer at trying to get out and maybe I've heard my, my story for the first time and see that I'm a local sister here in California or was a local sister, local um, Jehovah's Witness in California. Yes, I encourage you to get this book. I do, I'm reading this for the first time. My, my husband had it for a very long time and it sat on the shelf and I never picked it up. I saw the picture, right? I saw the picture, but I never picked it up. And I read this. 10 characteristics of toxic faith. One, special claims for itself. Two, dictatorial authority. So special claims, what Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones on earth that will survive Armageddon, right? Only Jehovah's Witnesses. Now they're even more clear than they've ever been before. Dictatorial authority. You don't go outside the organization for any of your information. The faithful and discreet slave class, they are the ones put down, chosen, right? Chosen from God. We don't ask questions. Three, an us versus them mentality. We're Jehovah's Witnesses. They are worldly people. Four, Punitive in nature. Mm, you're gonna get punished if you you're gonna get punished if you ask questions that are uncomfortable for elders to. They don't want to hear it. My elders didn't want to hear it. Uh, they were told not to listen, and they also told me not to tell anybody. Uh, they <sighs> told me uh, they never had ever known about the Australian Royal Commission. They never did any. Uh, they never went on YouTube to look at any information. Overwhelming service, pioneering, constant five meetings a week. They lowered it because we were actually going to the book studies as well. So we had the five meetings plus the book study. Yeah. Uh, no. Six, the followers are in pain. That, need I say more? Lots of us have come through narcissistic abuse. That's amazing. We've had family abuse, generational abuse. That's amazing. And then we go, we sit there, and we get more abused. You are, what is it? Un, un, you are, what? oh goodness, what is it? Um, it's not grace. They don't use grace. They use undeserved kindness. There we go. You are undeserved. Undeserved, right? Undeserved. Seven, closed communication. Well, you don't, you don't get to talk. You don't get to go to school. Eight, legalism. There's lots of legalism. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so strange. Nine, no objective accountability. They never take account, they never take responsibility for 1914, for things that have, have not happened, uh, child molesting. They never take responsibility. It's a professed Christian, professed Christian. What? Huh? It was a ministerial servant that molested 13 little boys. A ministerial servant. He was appointed by Holy Spirit. <sighs> 10, labeling, apostate. <sighs> I, 
I, I want to read this to you, and I will at another time. I will read this, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Um, this is really, really good. And there are a lot of, there's different kinds of Jehovah's Witnesses that leave. There's ones that are, that leave because they're, they're mad because they didn't get treated fairly and their positions didn't get, you know, accounted for in the congregation. I noticed that. Uh, elders that are upset because they just, they didn't, they get overlooked or they got overlooked for something. Men that got overlooked for something. And then there's Jehovah's Witnesses that are smart, smart and have left and they see all the abuses and unkindnesses and they know that there's something wrong, right? And there's ones that say, oh, I'm gonna party, right? I'm gonna live life a little. And then they never really wonder, they never really do research and see why they felt guilty for leaving, for living, right? And so there's different kinds of individuals that leave but if you, if you leave and you feel guilty because you're gay, because you're, uh, you, you found some love outside of the, your single sisters, right? They find a good man out there, a good man, better than the ones inside the congregation. Men in there are abusive and lazy. They don't want, they want a hot sister too. She's got to be looking good, right? Lady C said the same thing. And it's true, it's true. You have to work so hard if you're a single sister. There's what, 10 sisters for every one man. And over in the Liso Creek congregation, the elders didn't wanna tell the families um, that there was a convicted child molester. Well, they only wanted to tell the families that had the children, right? And then the families that had the children were not allowed to tell anybody else. What about the single sisters? What about all those single sisters that would be interested in that convicted child molester? And here they were working hard and, and you know, trying to keep themselves clean. And then they find this man and they, outside of the world, right? And they find this man and they don't know. How unfair is that? How unfair is that when they had an opportunity to pick, to pick somebody from the outside that was healthy? healthy, had a job, could offer them something, wasn't abusive in any way. How unfair. Talk about, talk about, uh, what is it? No objective accountability. Uh, the followers are in pain. Dictatorial authority, right? They can't go outside. They can't go outside the organization for, for um, men, good men, healthy men. Healthy emotionally, healthy physically, healthy spiritually. Because you know, these men are broken inside the organization. <sighs> yeah, so today I felt like sharing. <laughs> I don't always feel that way. Uh, I have to even listen to the information and break it down. And it takes a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of work. Do your journaling. Um, sometimes for me, journaling is just writing a few words in because I can't, the thoughts just don't, they just don't match. It's just overwhelming. It's flooding. So yes, and I do go see a therapist. And like I said, not everybody is, not everybody is up to par when it comes to cult, um, cult understanding. And for me, there was a lot of narcissistic uh, individuals in my home. I was reading, and I'll have to ask, because there's, there's people that share on Facebook, and I often want to ask them, can I share this? Can I share this? Because it helps me, and it helps, it will help other people. But yes, I was the scapegoat. There was a golden child in my family, and there was my passive aggressive father, or my, pa my pa very passive father who picked a woman who was very much like his mother, very abusive to him and to, to us emotionally. And so it, 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 it felt comfortable to go into an organization and listen to that kind of abuse. You sit there, you're undeserved. Probably you may be saved. Oh, okay, okay, well, you know, we sit there, we listen to that, we digest that, and, and that's because we're comfortable 
that's not that's not right that's not right so and as a parent I realized the damage that I've done and now I have to slowly undo that and and for myself and I have to carry my children along so I hope you understand that not you my priorities are my family and I have to keep it that way and so sometimes maybe I might be off a couple of days um, I'm hoping that I continue this because this helps me so much it helps me in my process it helps me to see positivity and it's true we can have that one negative person in line and it screws up your whole day right I have had so many good experiences with this by people seeing me that it's helped me immensely in my recovery and for my family's recovery because we need to hear people and that's something that we don't get because if you're afraid as an as a you want to fade away you can you can do that but it's hard for people to connect sometimes to you quickly and then you, when you show your face wow okay let's go let's get together let's hang on to each other let's pull each other up yeah so seeing a face helps a lot and I know that I know that seeing a face and it is uncomfortable to let my dirty laundry out or my baggage or whatever but I know it's gonna help somebody out there and so that's the, that's the reason do I want followers no none of us want followers we we're just showing a stop sign you know don't don't keep going in the direction that Jehovah's Witnesses are pushing. Condemnation of the world, that's the next deal. Oh my, you're gonna condemn the world? There's a lot of hate out there. I worry about my brothers and sisters when they're gonna go and do that because they're gonna get themselves in a lot of, in a lot of hurt. There's gonna be a whole lot of hurt when they start doing those things. And I don't think it's fair because those men sit up in a nice little building. They're not doing it. They're sending all the little sheep to do that. Nope. Mm -mm. Think about it. Don't do that. That's dangerous. Don't let your grandmas out there. Tell them to stop doing that. That's dangerous. It's dangerous sitting out there in, at not in the mornings, early in the mornings, the little grandmas, if they're going to end up saying that they're gonna, people are going to be condemned to death. That's dangerous. They're gonna get hurt. So I think, I personally think the more of us all coming out will shine more light on the fact that, that, that what they're saying is putting people in a lot of danger. It's my personal opinion. But I, I believe, I think Lloyd was very true. If we all stand up and I understand not everybody's able to do that. I understand that. But the strong ones that can, if you feel like, you, if that's what's motivating you, if you feel you could do it, it's, it so helps. Trey, I heard Trey and I like Trey. He's, he's neat. He just puts up videos every now and then and he talks and it, it's very cathartic. It's very helpful. It's very helpful. So I'm hoping this helps you today. I hope that you are on your healing journey. I will, and you're doing well, right? You're doing well, positive thinking. We can get through it. We're going to help each other, right? We're going to do it. And you're a survivor because you're here and you're listening and you're putting the fear away. That's amazing. That's awesome. And uh, Crisis of Conscience. Get your book. It's on Amazon. Um, you know, get your book and start reading. I'm reading now. I'm reading it. And I have all these books that I'm reading. It's so much fun. I get a chance to read and I have time to read it. So enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your freedom. You're free. Enjoy it. And even if you're still going to meetings and you're, you know, you still have to, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I know you have YouTube. Put your little earbuds on. Go to the meeting with your family. Put your earbud. Put on your YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, you could still you could still cheat. There's lots. It's fine. It's not cheating. <laughs> okay, follow your bliss and be good humans.